today we will start with file allocation methods so let us start with the file allocation methods so basically operating system what it does is that it allocates the disk space for our files so it does it in three different ways so we will see what are the advantages of each of this means way and uh, what we can use mostly to deploy the files so the three methods are first is contiguous allocation second is link allocation and the third is index allocation so one by one we will understand all these three methods and we will see which is the best method to allocate the disk space so let us start with contiguous allocation in this diagram you can see that here the different different files are there from file a to file e and if you consider the block structure here below the table now this is our mainly our hard disk so the word contiguous means what they will be in adjacent memory location means they will be in sequence so suppose if i consider file a so what the the structure says is that this file a will start at the block 2 and what is the length of this file is say suppose 3 then starting from the second block it will occupy the the next three adjacent blocks it means 2 3 and 4 will be used to store the file a now it is not like that one block is here one block is there it is adjacent because why the word is contiguous now consider again second example file b so see here it is indicated by green color so it starts from the location 9 and it ends at the location 13 why because the length is 5 9 plus 5 it is ending at this 30th location so in this way you can say that contiguous allocation means what each file will occupy a contiguous address space on the disk means they will be placed near it to each other the blocks will be adjacent then the disk address is assigned in linear order means in increasing linear order means after 2 it is 3 then 4 after 9 it is 10 after 10 it is 11 so it is assigned in linear order then it is very easy to implement but what is the drawback of this allocation is that due to this contiguous allocation external fragmentation may occur in this allocation technique so this is the simplest technique to allocate space for your file on the hard disk now let us see the second method second is a linked allocation so here what is happening is that now say suppose i have considered here one file suppose its name is jip so it starts at the start block is 9 and where it is ending at the block number 25 so here what is happening is that the blocks need not be adjacent to each other like that in the contiguous memory allocation but then how they will be linked together by this links so these links are used to group together all the blocks of the required file and uh, what will happen due to this a list of links is to be required for this type of allocation then this directory will consist of links or pointers to the first block of the file means like it should know that from where the first block is starting and since none of the block is wasted like that in the contiguous memory allocation it does not suffer from the external fragmentation and this is very effectively used in sequential access file because in sequential access file you just have to go from one block to another block isn't it but then what is the drawback of this particular allocation system is that this is inefficient when you want to direct access the file means say suppose if i directly want to go a particular block so that is not possible in this type of link allocation 
so we have seen some advantages and disadvantages of the two types of allocation now to overcome this disadvantages we will see the last allocation that is the indexed allocation now you observe here here again the file zip is taken and here first the index block is kept and within that index block all the pointers to various location of the disk blocks are kept means say suppose here this consists of nine numbers 16 1 10 and 25 number of blocks for storing this particular file and due to this what is happening is that see what was the drawback in contiguous memory allocation it was suffering from external fragmentation isn't it and uh, and what was the drawback of this link allocation it was suffering from is it could not directly access the direct access file isn't it these were the drawbacks so these two drawbacks are overcome in this index allocation so what is happening here is that a index table is maintained like i have shown you here then it easily enables us the random access which was not possible in link allocation and then this index blocks consist of all the pointers to the files and then each file has its own index block which stores the addresses of the disk space occupied by the file so like here i have taken one example of this file zip and here for that zip file the index block is there so similarly for every file such type of index block will be created and within this index block there will be pointers to the files so due to this what is happening is that this directory will consist of the addresses of index blocks of the files means in a particular hard disk multiple files could be there and for each file then for each file index block will be created and that will be stored within the directory so this index allocation overcomes the disadvantages of both the contiguous allocation and the link allocation so mostly this is preferred over contiguous and the link allocation so once again i'll repeat this contiguous allocation suffers from external fragmentation because their memory is wasted and in link allocation what is happening is that you cannot use this on direct access file so both these drawbacks are overcome by creating a index table and for every file one type of block is created that is known as the index block and which consists of the pointers to various disk block within a particular file so this is all about the file allocation